Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 3 of the Pac-Man game dev series where we recreate the famous arcade game on Scratch. If you haven't watched parts 1 and 2, then click on the card right here. And just a reminder, if you are stuck during any part or video, you can head over to the downloadable files link in the description box below, download just the file that you need and then continue with the tutorials. Today, we will program the setup and initialization of the food of the Pac-Man. By the end of this video, you should have both the small chunks of food as well as the big chunks of food already at the right place. With that said, let's get right into the code. First off, you can go into backdrops and delete the transparent one. Like I mentioned in part one, this was just there to allow you to see the grid squares more clearly and since we are past that, it's no longer necessary. After this, broadcast a new message called init food and wait. In the same way, duplicate another message called init big food and wait. As you probably guessed, init food corresponds to the food sprite while init big food corresponds to the big food sprite. Just to clear up any lingering doubts, eating the food will result in the player being close to winning. However, eating the big food makes the Pac-Man invincible and gives him the ability to kill frightened ghosts. Place the big food message above the food message and place them between init grid and init Pac-Man. The order is very important, so ensure that this is set up correctly. Okay, now create a variable called number of food. This is to track the total number of clones of the food and the big food sprite that we will create. Set this initially to zero. We created a lot of useful custom blocks in the Pac-Man sprite and we will use a few of them while creating the big food clones. Get into the sprite and throw in the get tile at x comma y and go to tile x comma y into the big food sprite. Also throw in the position at index block as this will come in very handy. Alright, clean up and we've got a bit of modification to do to these blocks. Edit the get tile at xy block and change it to tile x and tile y both for the label and for the inputs. This block will simply function to get the index of a tile given its tile x and tile y values. This is very simple as we have already done it. Just change the variables to their respective inputs and we are done. Nice. Let's now start with the messages. On receiving init big food, we'd like to create four different clones across the ends of the screen. To do this quickly in one frame, create a custom block called create clones, making sure to run without screen refresh. Place this block after the message and let's go ahead and define it. To ensure the clones are shown, show the sprite at the beginning. Get position at 56, then go to tile X and tile Y and create a clone. This effectively creates a clone and positions it at the tile with an index of 56. Our objective is to create four big food chunks at these positions on the level. As you can see from the image, they have indices of 56, 78, 284 and 306. Okay, the rest should be easy. Duplicate the code and just change the index, make them 78, then 284, and finally 306. Since we've created four clones, change number of food by four to keep the variable updated. At this point, the sprite is still going to be lingering on the screen, so make sure it is hidden. Test the program and wow, it works. The clones are perfectly positioned. 
quite neat and now we can call this slightly more difficult food sprite. For that, we will need some of the custom blocks from here. Throw in the go to tile x tile y and the get tile at tile x comma tile y. Okay, clean up the mess and let's start with the init food event. First, go to the front layer. Like we did for the big food sprite, we create a custom block called create clones, making sure to run without screen refresh. Put it after the event and now we must define it. Like we did last time, show the sprite at the beginning. Now we need to create a nested loop for the sprite to move across every tile on the screen. We don't have tile X and tile Y at the moment, so create these two, each time setting them for this sprite only. Set tile X to 0, then repeat 19, and after this set tile Y to 0 and do the same. I could use grid columns and grid rows instead, so I leave that to you. Each time in these nested loops, we must create a clone in the correct position. To ensure this, we get tile at tile x and tile y. From this, we can check if the particular tile is a wall or if it is empty. This will accomplish its purpose, but before it we must go to the correct position and this is why we have the go to block with tile x and tile y as inputs. Now, we can check if the tile is a wall which we stored as a hash. Well, that's a small mistake. We will create the clones at empty squares, so instead we check if the tile is not wall. While we're at it, we can also ensure that the clones are not created where a big food particle already is. Okay, if these conditions are met, then create a clone and change the food tally by 1. These loops must both loop between 0 and 18, so change tile y by 1 in the inner loop and change tile x by 1 in the outer loop. Lastly, hide the sprite so it doesn't linger around. Great, that was a lot of work and let us test it out. Oh wow, the level looks so pretty. While doing this the first time, I was a bit worried that the number of clones may exceed 300, which is Scratch's clone limit, but we are actually well within the range. The output is very satisfying, but we do need to make some small changes. You can see these tiles on the outside, which are literally impossible to reach, and they also have food clones in them. Also, there are food clones in the ghost prison and entry. Finally, I see little point in spawning a clone where the Pac-Man starts. So, for all of these instances, we will manually ensure that no clone is created. Using the mouse cursor and the grid sprite, you will be able to get these tile indices one by one, but here I'll save you the time and give them to you. There are 17 of them. Creating 17 different if conditions is super inefficient. So, what we can do instead is create a list to store these indices and then create a clone as long as the index of the sprite is not one of those indices in the list. It's a bit lengthy, but it's a lot faster than any realistic alternative. So, on receiving init big food, remember this is before the init food message, we will create a new list called incorrect indices for this sprite only. At the start, delete everything that's in the list. Now we must add each one of those numbers. That's 134, 135, 136, 210, 211, 212, 150, 151, 152, 226, 227, 228, 180, 181, 182, 200, and finally 21. Just check one more time to make sure that you've added each of these numbers to the list. 
hide the sprite and then test the program. Well, that is disappointing. No change at all. But it does make sense. While we did create the list, we haven't used it to do anything. Not a problem, just one condition will fix it. Before you create a clone, ensure that the particular index is not contained by the incorrect indices list. And that is it. Test the program one more time and will you look at that. Now the food clones are perfectly set up. The players still cannot eat them, but we can do that in a future video. Anyway, this has been enormously productive and a super important part of the game is ready. If you've enjoyed this video, then please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you in part 4.